Hey, what's up there, YouTubers? Edgeman's in a job community, guys, today with another deck tech. So today we have a EDH deck tech that we're going to be taking a look at, and it is Giora of the Gitu. So this is probably one of the most debated um, cards when it comes to pronunciations, um, but it really doesn't matter. What matters is that she has a ridiculous ability that just makes stuff really easy to cast and just overwhelm your opponents. So uh, we're going to be taking a look at it, and the first thing that we're looking at is the mana base that we have here. So um, I didn't spend a lot of money on the lands or anything like that and you'll see because I barely have any non-basic lands here. I have I have a couple but uh, for the most part we don't really need them. Um, I'm just running a lot of basic lands because it doesn't really inhibit the deck very much but if you guys want to use any um, mana fixing that you have for red blue then by all means you can add it in but I just didn't feel uh, that it was necessary. But we have command tower Rupture Spire, Scalding Tarn, Is It Boiler Works, we have Sulphur Falls, Vivid Crag, Vivid Creek, Lonely Sandbar, and our basic lands. So I wasn't joking when I said I didn't really spend any money on the, uh, on the lands. So we have 15 and 15. So 15 islands, and 15 mountains so that is the land base and at any time if you guys uh, want to check the deck list it's down below um, so you guys can use that as a reference but now we're pretty much taking a look at everything else so we're going to take a look at our general here and the ability so for two generic mana uh, you can remove target non-land card in your hand from the game put four time counters on it um, and if it doesn't have suspend, it gains suspend, where at the beginning of your upkeep, um, you remove a time counter from it, and when it has no time counters remaining on it, uh, you get to cast the removed card without paying its mana cost, so that makes it really awesome with a lot of cards that we have in here. Um, but it's a really easy to cast Planeswalker, or Planeswalker, really easy to cast Legendary Creature, um, and even if it dies, it's really easy to cast it again and again, uh, because we, our, our mana just keeps on racking up because we have a fair amount of lands in here. But uh, really easy to cast and really easy to just start getting stuff into play really quick. But uh, we're going to take a look at what cards we have inside here. So we have Jace the Mind Sculptor. So basically I use him more, more than anything for brainstorming. Um, but also it's good to have him for his minus one where you can just bounce target creature your opponent has to its hand um but his plus two is good if you want to build them up to his minus 12 where it's basically win against a target player um or just make target player lose the game if you're playing a multiplayer game but 1v1 it's basically that you win um but usually i just use him for brainstorming uh jace Balarin, uh, i mainly use him just for drawing cards uh, Omniscience, so this was from M13, uh, makes everything free to cast. Basically, you can cast non-land cards from your hand without paying their mana cost, which is awesome. Um, we have Temporal Aperture, so um, basically this is another way of casting stuff for free for 5 mana. Tap, shuffle your library and reveal the top card until the end of the turn. As long as the card remains uh, on the top of your library, you may play the card uh, as though it was in your hand without paying its mana cost. So that's always awesome. Uh, now we have stuff to take extra turns. So walk the Aeons. So it has a buyback and target player takes an extra turn after this one. We have uh, Beacon of Tomorrows. So another way to take an extra turn and it shuffles itself into its owner's library. Uh, time Stretch, take two extra turns. Time Warp, take an extra turn. Uh, for stuff to draw cards, niv it lets us draw basically every turn, and whenever we draw a card, we get to deal one damage. Uh, Aeon Chronicler, uh, whenever a suspend counter is removed from it, you get to draw a card. Mull Drifter, whenever it comes into play, you draw two cards. Sphinx of Lost Truths, you get to draw three cards, and you can do the kicker even though it was uh, suspended and you play it for free. Uh, because the kicker is an alternate cost. 
Um, but if you don't, then you discard three cards after you draw three cards. Uh, thought Reflection, whenever you would draw a card, draw two cards instead. Ristic Study, whenever an opponent plays a spell, you can draw a card unless that player pays one extra mana. Ancestral Vision, draw three cards, um, suspend four. Tidings, draw four cards. Uh, Factor Fiction, uh, reveal the top five cards of your library. Your opponent puts them uh, into two piles, and then you get to keep one, and the other one goes to the graveyard. Invoke the Fire Mind, you can draw X amount of cards or deal X amount of damage to target player or uh, creature. Brainstorm, and if you guys are interested in these altars, um, there's a link down below where you guys can find them. But uh, draw three cards, put two back on top of your deck in any order. Uh, Sensei's Divining Top, basically you rearrange the top three cards of your library. We have four big bulky creatures, Blightsteel Colossus, Trample, Infect, 11-11, and it's indestructible. Darksteel Colossus, Trample, 11-11, and indestructible, so I like Blightsteel better because it has Infect. Uh, Pathraiser of Olmog, Annihilator 3, uh, and it's a 9-9. Hit the Betrays, Annihilator 2 for 11-11, and whenever your opponent sacrifices a permanent, you get to take it. Uh, Artisan of Kozilek, whenever it enters the battlefield, you get to take target creature from um, your graveyard to the battlefield, and it has Annihilator 2, and it's a 10-9. Olmog's Crusher, Annihilator 2, attacks each turn if able. Tides about Tyrant, whenever you play a spell, return target permanent to its owner's hand. Whirlpool Warrior, uh, I like this card because it lets you shuffle the cards in your hand uh, into your library, then draw that many cards. It gives you more options of stuff that uh, you could possibly suspend, and also has the same ability for one red and sacrifice it. Uh, Inkwell Leviathan, Island Walk, Trample, Shroud, 7 11. Uh, Deep Sea Kraken, uh, unblockable, suspend 9 for 3 mana. And whenever opponent plays a spell, if uh, the Kraken is suspended, remove a time counter from it, and it's a 6-6, six, six, so you basically get to cast it pretty quick, especially if it's a multiplayer game. Uh, Bogardian Hellkite, 5-5 five, five for 8, flash flying, enters the battlefield, and you get to deal 5 damage divided as you choose among any number of target creatures and or players. Akroma Angel of Fury, uh, can't be countered, flying, trample, protection from white, and protection from blue, and it has fire breathing. Uh, Charmbreaker Devils, you get to take a instant or sorcery card at random from your graveyard to your hand at the beginning of each copy keep, and whenever you play an instant or sorcery spell, it gets plus four plus zero, which makes it a really awesome creature. Uh, but the, the best thing about it is just getting stuff back from your grave. Uh, also with Nuclave, that's the same thing, basically, uh, whenever... Uh, Nuclave comes into play, uh, you may return target red sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand, and uh, also whenever it comes into play, you may return target blue instant card from your graveyard to your hand, so uh, really awesome way to get stuff back. It's same thing with Is It Cronarch, um, so whenever he comes into play, you can return target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, now we have ways of removing time counters. So we have Jora's Time Bug. So uh, choose target permanent you control or suspend a card you own. Uh, if that permanent or card has a time counter on it, you may remove a time counter from it or put another time counter on it. So uh, basically with us, we're just going to be taking time counters off of it and casting it a lot easier. Uh, Rift Elemental uh, for two mana, remove a time counter from target permanent. You control or suspend a card you own. Rift Elemental gets plus two plus zero until the end of the turn. Uh, time Bender, uh, whenever he's turned face up, remove two time counters um, or suspended from target permanent or suspended card. Uh, Shivian Sand Mage, so basically another way of removing time counters again. Uh, Fury Charm as well, removing time counters. Uh, Dominus of Fealty, so at the beginning of your upkeep you can gain control of target permanent until the end of the turn. If you do, untap it and it gains haste until the end of the turn. Take Possession, Split Second Enchant Permanent, you control Enchanted Permanent. Very awesome. Force Fruition, so whenever an opponent plays a spell, that player draws 7 cards. So uh, it's a really easy way to mill out your opponents because they are going to have to play stuff in order to win. 
Uh, denying wins, search target player's library for up to seven cards and remove them from the game that player shuffles his or her library. So easy way to just pick out what cards you don't want certain player to have. Uh, thought of, uh, thought, thought of Adele Acquisitor, if I can talk today. Um, island block and whenever it deals combat damage to a player, search that player's library for a artifact card and reveal it. Um, and until the end of their turn, you can play that card. So, uh, easy way to get rid of artifacts that you don't want other players to have. Uh, we have Twin Cast, Copy Target, Instant, or Sorcery Spell. Uh, you can choose new targets for it. Mainly, I like to do that with the Take an Extra Turn cards. Uh, Desertion, Counter Target Spell. If it's an artifact or creature, put it under um, play under your control instead of into the owner's graveyard. Evacuation, return all creatures to their owner's hand. So if uh, there's a lot of board presence from all the other players. Uh, Sphinx Bone Wand, I like this one as well. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, uh, you can put a charge counter on it. If you do, it deals damage equal to the number of charge counters to target player or creature. So it's an easy way to build it up and just start blowing stuff up. Uh, World Fire, this is probably one of my favorite cards to suspend just because you can suspend this and suspend a creature card the next turn and uh, exile all permanents, exile all cards from... Uh, exile all cards from all hands and graveyards. Each player's life total becomes one. So um, that following turn, whenever that creature uh, gets its last uh, suspend counter removed, then it's going to come into play, and uh, you're basically you basically win with World Fire. And we have a couple of other cards like that where um, we get to blow up everybody's land with like Epicenter. So. Uh, Target player sacrifices a land, and threshold is all players sacrifice all lands instead. Ruination, destroy all non-basic lands, which is another reason why we run a lot of uh, basic lands. Lava Ball Trap, um, destroy two target lands. Lava Ball Trap deals four damage to each creature, so it's a good way to remove stuff. Uh, destructive Force, so each player sacrifices five lands, deals five damage to each creature. Obliterate, so can't be countered, destroy all artifacts, creatures, and lands, they can't be regenerated. Uh, decree of Annihilation, remove all artifacts, creatures, lands, graveyards, and hands from the game. Um, and you can also cycle it, and if you do, destroy all lands. Uh, apocalypse, so remove all permanents from the game, discard your hand, but everybody else keeps their hand, which kind of sucks. Uh, training Grounds, I like this with uh, Jura. Uh, activated abilities of creatures you control cost up to two generic mana less to activate. Uh, this doesn't reduce them to zero. Uh, if it does, it just makes it one. Uh, Paradox Haze, uh, enchant player at the beginning of enchanted player's first upkeep each turn. That player gets an additional upkeep. So uh, this is good just for removing time counters. Uh, Reality Strobe, so uh, this is another card that I really, really like. Um, but for six mana, Return target permanent to its owner's hand, uh, remove reality stroke from the game, and put three time counters on it. So it's going to keep on just removing stuff. It's going to lose its time counters, and then it's going to get re-removed from the game um, and put more time counters on it. So it keeps on just doing that. I That's why I really like reality stroke. Uh, increasing vengeance, so another way to copy stuff. So we get to copy a target instant or sorcery card. Uh, for a double red and for the flashback, uh, we get to copy it twice. We have Shatter Spree, so easy way to destroy a lot of artifacts and it can replicate. And that is about it. So that was my Jira of the Gitu deck. So if you guys are wondering about the deck list, like I said before, it is down below where you guys can check it out. Please be sure to like, favorite, and subscribe if you guys enjoyed this video. And remember to... Uh, just check out more stuff and be on the lookout for more Magic the Gathering videos on my channel. So until then, guys, uh, have a wonderful, fun-filled Magic the Gathering day.